everyone! Okay, so today I'm going to talk to you guys about TOD. And you may have heard about it in the paper, or you may have heard about it in the news, or you may have heard counselors or the mayor talking about TOD. And it's not just an Edmonton issue, it's, or it's not really an issue, it's just a topic. Um, but it's also happening in a lot of cities throughout the world. So what is TOD? Let's get down to it. Um, TOD is Transit Oriented Development. What does that mean, really? Um, so that doesn't really mean anything unless you've studied planning. Um, but what it really means is you want to build up the area around transit stations. So transit stations, um, and what I'm talking about when I say transit stations is like big transit stations. So not just like a bus stop, but like an LRT station um, or metro or subway depending where you are in the world. Or a big transit center. So what you want to do when you're building up around that transit center and why you want to do it is you want to start with um, learning what's the max distance people will walk and studies have been done and the max distance people will walk is going to be about 10 to 15 minutes which is going to be about 800 meters away from a transit station so let's say transit stations right here here's your 800 meters people are willing to walk that far but past that they're most likely going to drive so that's more likely they'll walk that if they know that the LRT um, or the bus is going to be there on time and going to be reliable and going to be fast so but the optimal people are gonna walk is about five minutes. So when you're thinking the optimal people are gonna walk is five minutes, how do we get the most amount of people to that station so that it's actually functional? So that people are actually using it and the millions of dollars we've put into this LRT station is worth it and our citizens are actually using it. So what you do is you build up around the LRT station because the higher you build up, the more people you can get into a space. Because if you think about it, in the suburbs, you have one to two story buildings, and when you look at the land plot, there's not a lot of people in a big space. But when you look into like a downtown core, there's a lot of people in a smaller space. So that's kind of what they're trying to emulate. So what happens in that 400 meters is you're gonna be building up quite a bit. So depending on your city, it'll be about six stories or higher, maybe a little bit lower, but it really varies on what your city's like. And then past that 400 meter, you're also gonna be building up, but not as high, and it'll be about four stories, maybe a little higher, maybe a little lower, uh, but not lower than two. And then past that, it's gonna be all one to two stories. Um, and it'll be more box stores like Walmarts um, and residential. So what happens in that 400 to 800 meter range that people are willing to walk that you need to make it successful? So what you really need to make it successful is a mix of things. So you're gonna need residential, you're gonna need things like schools, you're gonna need um, offices so people are working there, and you're gonna need commercial, so like restaurants or um, retail spaces so that people are using this space all the time. And why it's important to have a mix of all those things is so that you don't have deadness in your system. So let's say there's a school around the LRT station, for example, a university LRT station. Um, that's great because it's really highly used September, October, November, December, January, February, March, April. And then for four months, not as much used. But if you have also housing in the area, if you have restaurants in the area, if you have grocery stores, if you have banks, if you have office buildings, then it's going to be used throughout the year. Especially if there's uh, essential needs that you want in your neighborhood and residential. So for me, if I wanted to move to around an LRT station and I picked an LRT station that had a small grocery store nearby and had a dental office and had you know, a pharmacist, then those are things that I'm going to use on a regular basis that I can walk to, which also will help increase my health. So what you really want to do is you want to build up high and you want to build up a mix of different things. Because if you think about bigger cities that have done this for years and years and years, and I'm going to give you an extreme example that Edmonton's really not like, but it's an easy city that all of you will know is New York. So in New York, if you go around an LRT or a subway st station, there's a lot of different things. People are living there, people are shopping there, people are working there. Um, you're not able to go into an area and be like, this is all residential or this is all offices. 
Um, maybe Wall Street is a little bit more like this is all offices, but mostly the whole island is a mix of uses. And there's always people out, and that's why you, they say the city's always busy. Um, and it never sleeps because that's kind of what you want around an LRT station and that's why they have such an awesome subway system. Um, yes, it has some kinks to work out, but that's all systems. So, the good things about having TOD is first, it's going to be more financially sustainable, not only for the city, but also personally. So for the city, it's going to be more financially sustainable because more people will be using the system, which means more money is going back into the system, which means hopefully one day the system will pay itself off. Transit systems usually don't pay themselves off um, because they are quite expensive and they are quite subsidized for the users to make it more attractive to move away from the automobile. But if you get a lot of people using it, then when you go to the feds and you go to the province and you say, hey, I need more money to expand our LRT system, you're more likely to get that money. Uh, personally, you may be able to reduce your cars down to one or down to none or even just reduce the amount you use your car because you're going to be able to use the LRT system or use the bus system um, and that's going to use, reduce the amounts of uh, rides that you take in your automobile. And then it's also going to be eco-friendly because the less car trips you take and the more people on an LRT system versus everyone in their car is going to reduce gas, admis gas emissions and it's going to be more friendly for the world. Um, and then the biggest thing is health reasons. Um, if you're going to be walking to the LRT instead of just walking to your car, it's going to take you a few more minutes, which is going to increase your health because whether you believe it or not, just a little bit of walking more every day will help increase your health. Um, ask any student that started their day job um, how their waistline is when they've gone from walking around from classes to classes all the time to sitting at a desk eight hours a day. I have friends who can prove that theory. Um, and then, so that's the big positives to why you'd want to do some TOD. Um, some of the negatives are you may lose some park space because you're building up a lot in the area. They will do things like pocket parks or they'll try and plant trees on the bigger sidewalks to make sidewalks more comfortable and make you feel, you know, not like you're in a concrete jungle. Um, but that is a negative and then also you're gonna not have as much privacy as you would out in the suburbs. Um, for some people that's not a big deal, they want to live where everything's happening and everything's going, everything's moving and some people really treasure their privacy and really treasure a big backyard and they want a dog and all those things and that's awesome too. It just depends on your preference but as a city right now we've really catered to the suburbs and now we're making a shift because there is a demand to live in um, in the downtown area and in the university area. Uh, look at the, marking, uh, the market for houses there, they have gone up. They're quite expensive because there is a demand for it and those neighborhoods have really awesome trees. Um, so yeah, so those are some of the negatives because there always is trade-offs for what you're going to be doing. Um, when you built the suburbs, you had to drive more and that was a trade-off because health decreased but you got more space um, but you did walk less so that's, you know, that's part of life, that's a fact of life. Um, so yeah. That's what TOD really is, and if I've rambled on too long, I'm going to give you a quick sub up of what it is. TOD is like a pyramid. Your LRT station is in the middle, but really it's at ground level. You're building up high around that LRT system, and you're putting a mix of use in all this area. Out here, you'll have more residential and more big box stores, but you want to put as many people into this area so they use that system. So that we can gain a better system in the future. So I hope that helped explain what TOD is. It's kind of a wonky topic because it's not really explained very well to um, people who may be reading the paper and really you can't just have like long definitions in the paper that wouldn't be interesting to read. But I hope I made some clarifications for you guys and I hope you have a fantastic day and I'll see you guys next time. Bye! And also a big plus and it's a big plus for me and I know other people feel the same way not everyone and maybe you haven't thought about it but you will need less parking stalls and less parkades especially in like the downtown area or the university area or you know high volume places where people want to go 
and especially for Edmonton it's super depressing when you're walking downtown and there's a whole bunch of parking uh, lots and they're not even like built up parking lots they're just like street level parking lots and it just looks sad and I just want stuff to be built on them and I know one day they will and our downtown is super changing which is fantastic but that is a huge plus because if we get a better transit system and more people start using it our city will become desirable from builders from all over the world to come here and say hey you got a lot of people who like downtown and want to do stuff downtown and you put a system in place that's easy for them to get there and easy for them to move around in downtown so I'm gonna build here because it's super desirable and people want it and that is a fact because the arena brought awesomeness and now we have our innate line which has got kinks <laughs> that aren't fantastic but they will be worked out eventually they will I have trust in the city I believe in the mayor and I believe in sometimes things are a struggle and sometimes you just need to get past them and you gotta be able to figure out what went wrong before you move forward.